Hello and welcome to another MSTP tutorial video. In this third video in the custom module series, we're going to make a simple comb filter using the filter template patch. We'll also learn how to integrate our user interface objects into the MSDP parameter system, and we'll learn how to add our custom modules to our local install of MSDP. So to begin, I have the developer console open, as well as two finder windows. One, I've navigated into the source code and into the templates folder in the source code. And the other window, I have navigated into the MSDP2 folder in the document tree. We're going to be using both of these windows to set ourselves up. So if I want to use the filter template, one thing that's important is to not actually use the original template because we may want to come back to this again in the future and we don't want to override that file. So I'm going to make a copy, but I'm not going to make a copy in the original location. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to come into my documents folder. In the msdp2 folder in documents, we see a collection of uh, folders that start with third party. Any patches added to the third-party folders will appear in our local install of MSDP. And if we go into modules, we'll see three folder names that should look familiar, data, sound, and video. By adding our custom modules to one of these folders, it will cause that module to appear in the pedalboard drop-down menu for that um, type. So I'm going to navigate into the sound folder, and it's here that I'm going to paste the copy of the filter template. Now, we do have a comb filter in MSDP, but it's just called comb. I want to give this a different name, so maybe I'll call this comber. Now, as soon as that's been added, we should be able to open that in a pedal board. So in the developer console, I'm going to go to create new board, and I'm going to check out the sound drop-down menu. Now, if we look at the very bottom of this list, where it says third-party modules, we can see the comber.maxpad file. And if I open that, there is the filter template as it's been created. Now that we have that ready, let's open up the file and get to patching. Since I'm working in a copy, I feel comfortable making edits to this. I'm going to start by just deleting some of the content that I don't need to see, like all of these comments and panels. All right. You can see that with this default uh, template, all we have are a couple of delay tilde objects. And basically what we're going to do is replace that with a couple of comb tilde objects. So I'm going to go to new object and I'll type in comb tilde. Now I want all of the parameter goodness that comes with the help file. So I just um, opened up the comb tilde help file and I'm going to just copy paste everything that I see attached to this demonstration we can use that in our own patch. So I'm going to delete that comb tilde object I just made. I'm going to replace it with a new one. And then since this is a stereo effect, I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that comb. Then I'm going to connect all of these number boxes into that duplicate. And now the only thing that's missing is the input into the first inlet, which will be the signal that we want to process. At this point, I no longer need the delay tilde objects, so I'll delete those. I'll hold on to this for just one moment, but we'll delete that shortly as well. I'm going to take the stereo signal in MSDP object, that's the msdp.ui.input1 bpatcher. The left output is our left signal our left channel, and the right output is our right channel. So I can simply plug those two into the first inlets of the comb filters. Next, I can take the output and plug that into the MSTP UI outputs object. The final two inputs are the left and right channels that we want to send out to MSTP. So I can plug that in and plug that in, and that's actually all we need to do to create an effective signal chain. All right, at this point, we're ready to test the module out. In order to do that, I'm going to create a new board, and I'm going to load in A plus two synthesizer up. Very quickly, I'll play a few notes so that we can hear that we're getting that from the console. Great. 
Now to connect this, all I need to do is follow the traditional protocol of connecting the inputs and the outputs. So I'll select A and 1. And then I need to give this some values that are useful. So I'll set the feed forward and feed back up. Um, I've got the volume down a little bit. And let's play some notes now. Okay, so at this point we have two options. We can work on creating the interface or we can work on setting up the parameters. Let's start first by hooking these up to the MSDP param objects. So in MSDP, all parameter routing is controlled via these objects that we call msdp.param objects. And we have a handful of different types of these. Uh, msdp.param is useful for uh, values that you want to set once and then leave for a while. msdp.param.line is great for any parameter that can be rammed, uh, anything that you may want to control with a dial or with automation. So if we look at this demonstration parameter up above, we can see that the um, number box, the floating point number box, is being hooked into the left inlet of the msdp.param object, and the msdp.param object is then being connected back into the left inlet of the number box. And that connection is what, what we want to make for all of the interface objects that we have. So we don't need this pre-built tool anymore that was just there for demonstration. And if we want to make a new msdp.param object, we can do that from the msdp builder tool. So the msdp builder tool allows us to generate parameter objects and uh, special user interface objects with parameters built in. Since we already have some number boxes created, all I want to do is make some new msdp.param objects. The advantage to using the msdp builder is that it will actually scrub through the patch to see what parameters you already have, so that when you create a new one, it will already have a parameter number, we can see this one is parameter 4, associated with it. So this does a lot of work behind the scenes to set things up for you. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 parameters in here, so I need to make some more new ones now. If I hit create again, there's 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those others were created behind the scenes. So we can see that the builder tool is a very useful way of speeding up the process. Oh, I didn't need that eighth one. And now, to hook these up, we'll see what makes this so great. All we need to do, plug the output of the param object into the interface object or the parameter that we want to store, and then hook that object back into the mstp.param. So I can repeat this process for the other objects. And just like that, all four of these parameters can now be updated with automation. Their values can be stored when a board is saved and recalled when a board is opened again. That gives us full integration into the parameter I.O. functionality for all of the MSDP uh, tooling. So if we look at these msdp.param objects, I want to point out that there are two arguments. The first argument is the parameter number, and we use the syntax of p followed by the number, and they're connected, there's no space there. The second argument is the default value for the object that it's connected to. So we don't want a default value of 1 for all of these. Uh, let's start with the delay time of 1111, because I, I like that value. An input gain of 1 feels right for the gain. And for feedback and feed forward, I'll set that to 0.99, because with comb filter, we really hear the value that we've chosen when we set it to a high number. So now, the next time I open this um, patch, all of these numbers will be set to that default value. And that's the value that you'll get when a user opens this board up, um, or this module up, in a new board. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to close it and then reopen it. And we can see that those default values have now been populated for our parameters. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create the interface. All of the interface occurs in presentation mode, 
And right now we can see that the elements that came with the template are there, but nothing else is there. So let's go ahead and add in the other elements now. All I need to do is select them and then choose Add to Presentation. And I can now place these in the presentation window. I may want those comments as well. Obviously, you may want to spend significantly more time creating a nice interface. This is just for this first demonstration. In a future video, we are going to look at dials, keyboards, and other interface objects. But here we have an interface that is usable and connected to all the MSDP systems. So let's test this out on a board now. So I've got that pedal board open again. Uh, if I play a note now, we won't hear anything because nothing is routed out to the speakers, but I'm going to make a new module. I'll go back to the sound menu and then I'll load that comer.maxpad file. You can see that we have all of our default values input and um, I can route into here. And now I'm going to turn the volume down just to be safe. If I play a note, we do hear it. Now at this point, if we had a project open, I could save this patch and we could recall it later. Um, it is a fully functional patch at this point, and if we wanted to distribute this or share it with friends, we could just ask the, the user or the friend that we share it with to place the Comer patch into the third party modules sound folder in their MSDP2 folder on their documentary. That wraps up this tutorial video. In the next video, we'll dive deeper into the templates, learn how to create our own MSDP user interface objects, and uh, learn more about creating more complex modules. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with more tutorial videos.